Hey, welcome back to part three. This is Jesse with JLS Comics, and we are going to do part three of the Comic Con Survival Guide, so stick around. What is up everybody? This is Jesse here with JLS Comics. Welcome back to yet another video. This is gonna be part three of my Comic-Con survival guide. And we're gonna talk about a couple of things today. One's gonna be the budget, very important. And then uh, because we've kind of, we're moving through the process here, uh, now we're at the step where we're actually at the convention. So we're gonna talk about some etiquette, some do's and some don'ts around that, okay? So kind of two parts. The first part is going to be the budget. That's very, very important. And I've been saying it since the first part of the series, the beginning of April, planning ahead is essential. One of the ways of planning that is going to be your budget. Um, you need to, you know, we talked about it in the, the first one, part one, um, you know, finding a convention and deciding if you're going for a day versus all weekend. That's gonna play into to this here. Um, are you traveling or is it something local? Um, you know, San Diego Comic Con, for example, if you're gonna go, you know, for the week, um, you know, you may share with a friend or not, but expect to spend something like $3,000, you know, a couple thousand for the hotel, like 50 bucks a day on food, then you get your plane ticket, the con ticket, whatever else you might do. Um, so you got to factor in all these things, um, you know, just that, that planning ahead is essential. Um, and I said last week, uh, knowing what you're looking for, having a, a strategy, a plan in place uh, when you go to the convention. Um, because I'm gonna talk about something with that in a second, so let's put a pin in that and I'll come right back to it. A um, couple of things to keep in mind with the budget. A lot of the cons have um, tons and tons of stuff, just all kinds of swag and free stuff, and you know, all the booths and the vendors are selling any, you know, movie stuff, video game stuff, comic book stuff. Um, yeah, it runs the gamut, it, it, tons and tons of different things. So you gotta ask yourself a couple of questions. You know, you, you may be buying it just because it's cool and you're like caught up in the hype in the moment, but do you really, do you really like that? Uh, or are you buying it just to buy it? Is it a, a convention exclusive? And again, do you like it or are you buying just because it's an exclusive? You know, they, they have a lot of, um, you know, various uh, convention things that, that um, I, I will probably skip, but you know, with the, the comic book exclusives, I'll, I'll go for those, for example. Um, and that kind of ties into the next question you should ask yourself. Do you even collect that? You know, you may be picking up that really awesome, amazing statue, um, but do you collect those? Uh, are you getting it just because it's, you know, hard to find there? Um, so a couple things kind of along that line, um, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about comic books because that's my reference point. That's really within my wheelhouse. There's a lot of other stuff there that this can apply to. But when you look at the comic books, um, know their value. Uh, I said last week, go in with your, um, with your want list. Um, it, you know what you want. I'm sure you've done the research on the books. You know the value, the range. Um, you know whether they're hard to find or not. You may find them there. But um, you know, look through. There's a lot. Uh, what I call a convention tax. Um, a, a lot of the wall books and the uh, the key books um, that they're going to be marked up a bit. You know, um, but look at those prices. Gauge if uh, it's something that is within your price range and that budget that you set. Um, or ask yourself, be honest, you know, it's, it's great to support the vendors and everything, but not to sacrifice yourself, right? That's very important. So can you buy this elsewhere? I hate to bring up eBay, but you know, that is a good reference point, not a price guide, by the way. Um, so say you want to, okay? You know, um, don't be afraid to haggle if you want to buy that book. You see the price, you maybe want it down a little bit. Um, don't be afraid to have them, um, but be reasonable with it. Please be reasonable with the price. Uh, low balling is not only insulting to the vendor, mm -hmm. uh, but really, quite frankly, it's going to be a waste of their time. They're not going to entertain those offers. Um, you got to know the grade. You got to know the price range for the book to, to give them a realistic offer. Typically, something within say um, anywhere from like ten to twenty five percent. That's really an outlier. But don't go. Uh, offering anything uh, above and beyond that but start with don't you know say you want to spend is a $50 book and you want to spend 
$40 on it, don't offer 40 because he's gonna counter with 45. Come with 30 or 35 and then meet in the middle at that 40, which is what you wanted, okay? Um, don't be afraid to walk away from a deal either. Don't feel obligated to buy it just because you're there, the pressure's on, and you know, um, um, you don't feel like you have to buy it, okay? You can walk away, just like with a car, walk away. They may chase you and say, hey, you know what? Um, another way with the budget and a way to get a good deal with the books is actually um, to get a, a stack of books from, from the vendor. Um, the profit margins are, are kind of narrow. It depending on the convention, you know, the tables can be 150 bucks, 300 bucks, and then you got to pay the people, um, you, the travel. Um, you know, those people have to ship all that stuff there. It doesn't just show up. All those books, um, and that costs money. So um, you know, if you if it's a booth with you know, say dollar books, 50 cent books, they have to move a lot of product, a lot of books, um, and a good way to get a good deal is to get a stack of books and, and bundle them and say, hey, you know, um, can, can I get a good deal on buying this many books from you? And a lot of them like that because again, they're, they're trying to move volume. Um, you know, tying into what I said at the beginning, are you going for a day or are you going for all weekend? Typically, because they are moving that volume and they want to sell it versus paying to have it shipped back to the store, the LCS or you know the, the warehouse or wherever it is, the best deals are going to be on Sunday. Now, if it's something that's like really sought after and really it, you think it's going to go quick, then you know um, buy it then. Don't wait that that um, till that Sunday, you know, if you can. But you know what, with the one day stuff, and I typically go for one day. Um, I'm going to go there and, and try to work the prices, even though it. it, it I, I like to go on Saturdays. Um, so that that is essentially it. Um, you know, don't be afraid to haggle. Stick with the budget. Um, I said last week, bring cash. That's going to help you stick to your budget that you set, that you planned ahead. Um, but um, bring a credit card, okay? You can still, whatever the credit card is, this is a very good idea, um, and I recommend it. Set an alert. If you keep swiping that card, you may not be keeping track of that price. So um, if you set an alert, you know, you only want to spend uh, 500 bucks today, set an alert, a convention alert. Say, um, you know, have it say, hey, stop, slow down, um, smoke coming off that credit card. So um, let it go. Uh, it's a good way, you know, it'll pop up on your phone. It's a good way to remind yourself, oh yeah, I'm hitting my budget now. I better, I better hold off, okay? Um, so that's it. I know there's a lot of other ways to budget, a lot of tips and strategies and what have you, uh, making a spreadsheet, but the key there is planning early. Be prepared, okay? What are your tips? Uh, let me know down below. Uh, I'd be very interested to hear those, uh, but stick around for part two here because we're going to talk about some convention etiquette, okay? Hang on. Part two. Um, stay tuned. Please. See, that's some etiquette for you. Um, so we're going to talk about Connecticut. Not the state, but convention etiquette, okay? Um, I, I've brought in a few of these uh, in, in the past, last video for example, um, but we're going to kind of dive in a little bit deeper on some of these, okay? One of them um, is, and I mentioned this last time, um, but stay hydrated, eat food. Um, and the reason why that is tied into etiquette is because when you're dehydrated, you whoop, stink a little bit. So. Um, you know, eating, um, staying hydrated is going to help with that olfactory uh, sense. I don't want to be overpowered by that, and I know I'm not alone on that. I've seen that on plenty of other videos where they're like, please, you know, use your body deodorants. So uh, there you go. Also, if, if you're um, not eating, you may be tired, you may be grumpy. Um, these conventions are very busy, and there's some walkways, some main flows of traffic. So if you're walking slow, you may be holding up people trying to go back and forth, and that is not very um, etiquette-y, okay? Um, tying into that, and watch where you're going too, and in those aisles. Don't be bumping people. Don't stop in the middle with your group and make everybody have to walk around you. Um, that is really rude. Blocking the traffic. Don't hold up, you know, stopping and chatting in front of somebody's table. Those people are trying to work. So um, step aside, remove yourself for, from that walk here. Maybe go over where they have the food and sit down or something um, so you're not blocking people. Um, you know, um, it, it, it really <laughs> can set somebody the wrong way, you know, you know, if you stop there in the middle. Especially, you know, there's some, um, you know, 
disabled folks that may be going there and it's very inconvenient for them too so um, something I mentioned last time you know there, there are a lot of people they're in these but there's also a lot of lines okay um, you're gonna be waiting for things whether it's an artist uh, a table a panel um, if you're doing cosplay you may be waiting to get into one of the uh, the photo shoots or one of the contests um, but we're all there. We all know the line, so don't complain about the line. It's not going to make you go any faster. We all know we're waiting. We don't need to hear you say that we're waiting because we all don't want to be in line, but you know what? We have to, okay? Um, and the other thing I want to mention too, there's going to be so many different fans there to celebrate various things, a whole plethora of things that you may or may not be a fan of yourself, but you know what? Leave them alone. Don't make fun of them. Don't sneer at them. Don't... Uh, make rude remarks um, or kind of generally make it a, a not a fun time for them you know uh, focus on what you're there for for your fun and let them have their own fun as long as you're not hurting anybody or they aren't um, then let them be please okay um, one of those things is going to be um, the whole fanboy polarization thing so if you're you're a Marvel fan and you see the Batman you don't want to go you know unless it's like really a good fun and they know it don't be going to fight over the, um, you know, the DC fans. You know, you're an Avengers fan. You want to go fight the Justice League or say something rude to them or whatever. Somebody's table or you're a Star Wars fan and you want to go say something rude to those Trekkies over there or vice versa. Don't do that. That's very disrespectful and rude. That's going to ruin a lot of people's time because probably somebody's going to complain and get security involved and you don't want that. Okay. Um, another thing, and you know what? This has happened. Um, don't uh, fight. I just kind of mentioned that briefly, but you know what? Don't stab people with pens either. That actually happened at the San Diego Comic Con. Somebody was fighting over a, a chair for one of the panels and somebody got stabbed and I should not be laughing because that is horrible, but you know what? I'm laughing at the ridiculousness of it. I mean, please don't stab people. Whether it's a pen that you brought, like I said last time, bring some pens, or your, uh, your sword from your costume, don't stab people. Um, don't stampede or trample or shove. You know what? Um, I know some things are hard to get to at the tables, but man, this is not, you know, Black Friday at Walmart where you're trying to get some crazy deal. Just your your health and well-being and the people around you, it's not worth it. It might be an awesome thing, but you know what? Don't trample people. Don't shove people out of the way. Don't elbow. No, don't. None of this, okay? Um, now let's talk about, because um, we talked about the walkway. Let's talk about... Um, and I mentioned the, the, the booths, okay, um, where they have the, the seller stuff. Those people are working. Um, you know what? Go in there and buy stuff. Don't loiter. Don't kind of like waste their time um, because, like I said, they, they have a lot of other people they're trying to um, attend to as well. Um, but in terms of the artists uh, and the creators who may be signing an artist alley, please be respectful of the artist. Not only the artist, um, now that I mentioned that, but the other people in line, okay? Um, those people are very busy. They're there, um, you know, because they love it too, okay? It's okay to talk to them, uh, you know, bring some books for them to sign if they say you want to buy something. You know what? It's a good idea to buy something from them, you know what? But even if you don't, um, you have like a book or two to sign, um, that's fine. But please make sure you say thank you. Um, that, those two words go a long way, and sadly, I don't hear that enough. Say thank you. Show them your appreciation. You waited in line, yes, I know, um, but that thank you goes a long way. Um, it's just that verbalization of your appreciation is important. Um, but you know, bringing a couple books is great. Don't bring a hundred books for them to sign. That's going to be rude for all those people waiting behind you. Okay, um, you know what? That guy that was complaining about the line, he's going to be complaining a lot more, and I don't think you want to deal with that, do you? Um, so, bring just a few books, okay? Um, and if they ask to personalize it, you know what, say yes, that's really cool that they would offer to do that, not just sign their name, but make it out to you. A lot of times when, when people decline that, um, it's because they're flipping it. It's going to eBay, they don't want that personalization on there because they're trying to make a profit off it. And that's gonna be a little bit disrespectful to the artist, you know? Um, so if they offer to personalize it, that's an awesome thing, that's really cool, so say yes. Um, that would be really great. Um, of them to do um, and like I said buy something t chat with them you know if you want ask them a couple questions but don't get like too crazy with it okay 
Um, and then another thing I want to mention is very, very important, okay? Have fun. I mentioned this last time too, bringing that positive attitude, uh, have a smile on your face, say thank you, um, show people respect. That is just basic, not only etiquette for the convention, but just in, in life in general. You know, treat other people as you want to be treated. If they're not hurting you or anybody else, then why, well, why bother them, really? So have fun there. You're there to have fun, okay? Um, another thing, too, this happens a lot, sadly, more than we should admit. Um, don't offer sexual favors for anything, really, there. Um, for books or signatures or um, if you see a, a cosplay person, don't offer that for a photo or anything like that because guess what that's called? It's prostitution. And guess what? It's illegal. So don't do it, okay? Um, and that brings up something interesting. Uh, cosplay, it's a huge part of convention, convention life, convention culture. So I want to dedicate a whole video just to that, okay? So stay tuned next week, actually. I have a very special cosplay video for you. It's actually going to be live. Um, it's gonna be taking place next Sunday at 2 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's gonna be live uh, with myself and a panel of guests, some experts uh, and um, artists in, in the cosplay world. Um, so please stay tuned for that. Look out for the video. Um, there's gonna be some Q&A, so you know, if you have questions and things, you want to see that, um, please tune in. Um, I'll, I'll remind you guys through the week. I'm really excited for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it should be both fun and uh, educational. Um, you know, there's a, a lot there. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. I hope you'll tune in there. Um, but back to this here, uh, the etiquette. Uh, let me know as well as with the budgeting, uh, some etiquette things, to, you know, if you want to share a story. Um, I know there's plenty out there of something that has happened or hasn't happened. Um, then by all means, put it in the comments, you know, for myself and, you know, for the other people that will be reading them. Um, that will be really cool. Um, I left out a few things here purposely because I think that they do tie into uh, next week and the cosplay uh, live um, panel that we're going to do. Um, so um, we'll, we'll be able to talk about them then, you know, the photography and cosplay in general, do's and don'ts around that. Um, not only for people appreciating it, but for the artists themselves, okay? Um, but I think that I've talked long enough here. I don't want to make this too long. Um, this is Jesse here with JLS Comics. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys uh, in the near future. Uh, peace.